things that you normally don't say, he said. Like what? Just, just he, he, his comment was, we ain't going to be hurt for nothing. Who is we? He said, we ain't, this is what he told me. I said, damn man, that's pretty sad. I said, financially, that's going to fuck some shit up. And he goes, we ain't going to be hurt for nothing. What you saying that don't mean, you know, that's sure it's involvement or this and that. Because I'm going to tell you something else, man. You know, we, we, we don't know the, well, we know that Reggie and Sugar are close. They grew up together. They're like brothers, right? We don't know how much Sugar completely trusts Reggie or will say certain things to Reggie. You know, maybe there's nothing he won't say to him. Then again, maybe there is. Maybe um, um, Reggie knows a lot, okay? But I don't think if she'll get anything to do with Tupac's death, he would tell Reggie. He would. You think he would? He would. I know he would. Like, uh, Cause, because they're tighter than you think. Everything that Suge does, Reggie knows. Because I tell you right now, anything goes down with Suge, you know who's going to run this company? Reggie. Uh, well, what do you mean? Death row? He would, he would much rather see it turn over to Reggie. Nope. Well, because then everything comes back on Reggie, right? Everything is pointed at Reggie. That's pressure Reggie can't handle. Let me tell you, if something goes wrong with Shug, who's going to run the company? Common sense, right? Sharita was, Sharita. Sharita was is on the thing. Sharita's on the paper. Yeah, yeah, Reggie she... would carry most of the burden. Man, I can't see it. I cannot yeah. see that. I can't yeah. see that. Even, and, I, and you know who I got there from? A good source, a family member. <laughs> a family member. Maria? Brittany's dad. Brittany's dad. Brittany's dad told me that. Wow. He goes, he said, Michael, if anything happens to Suge, that's what he told me. If anything happens to Suge, Brittany would run the majority of the company. And I said, even over Sharita? He goes, trust me. Reggie, you know why? One thing Suge does, one thing Suge does is trust Reggie. He does. I'm saying Reggie fucked that whole shooting deal up. All that shit was Reggie's fault. Reggie was the one that wasn't with Suge. Reggie was the one who was, you know, I was at the hospital when Red Suge called Reggie in there. You see what I'm saying? I was there. One thing Suge didn't do is he didn't blame any of it for Reggie. And trust me, this shit was all Reggie's fault. Yeah, it was. It was all Reggie's fault. It should have been blamed on Reggie. You know, I mean, it wasn't even something where you could debate it. Any, any common sense tells you that the fault, just the fault wasn't yours. You had been off for six weeks. Yeah. Every one of them decisions that got me, uh, me out of there, you in there, and everything else, all of that came from Reggie's mouth. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All that came straight from Reggie. That's why this shit was so comical. Because I kept saying, boy, and then when I talked to Mr. When, when I went, um, when we went Jets came with Mr. Knight, yeah. he told me on the leg. He goes, yeah, if anything happens, anything comes up, Richie would be the one running the whole day in a day out operation. Mm-hmm. So it would turn it to him. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you who he wouldn't turn it to. He has more faith in Reggie than he does Norris and, uh, what's it called? Mm-hmm. Death Row people. Death Row people. He would turn it over to Reggie and say, everything that Shoot would get, he would call Reggie, and then Reggie would put it into play. Mm-hmm. Well, Mike, you really think it was a setup. Now uh, you gotta ask that question. Do you, in your heart, think it was a setup? That's a hard question. It's a hard question for me, Frank. Okay, but see, Mike, it's not for me. You see what I'm saying? You were, you, let me tell you why it was hard. Because I've heard some other. Because remember, I hang out with Reggie. Right. You know me and Reggie, we're, we're sort of tight. Right. But you know, me and you and Reggie, I, I hang out with both of y'all, so I'm telling you, from from the end that I see with him, when he told me the other with the other day, cause like he told me, he goes, yo, man, go order me some red carpet. I go, what? You need to put red carpet in your penthouse suite and you're a fool? He said, yeah, man, I'd have crossed over to the other side. Then he started laughing. Mm-hmm. Then I said, I said, I said, I know you ain't serious. He goes, man, he goes, I tried to shit the right way. And then we started laughing, mm-hmm. right? He just says little things to make me think and to make his dad nervous. You see what I'm saying? Because his dad always tells me and tell him, hey, talk to Reggie. Hey, talk to Reggie. Hey, talk to Reggie. You see what I'm saying? Now I'm going to tell you right now, 
down, Frank, and between me and you, Reggie's in too deep. Oh, yeah, we... we He's in way too deep. Well, we figured that was happening anyway. We talked about that before. I mean, there's, there's no reason for him to be here as deep as he is. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's doing this shit out of loyalty. He's thinking around out of loyalty. Then they said some things, right? That I looked back at him. Remember what he said? What you gonna do, Fred? What you gonna do? You know what he wanted you to do? Do you really wanna know? Yeah. So, so you know. Mm -hmm. See? But here's the deal. With them, that was for real. There wasn't no joke there. Well, sure, you guys know what I was gonna do. Yeah, that's right. And then they were really persistent 
about you not having one. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're going to be checking you. And then, and then they was even trying to convince the people with CCW not to carry. Right. Like they wasn't going to give them courtesy up. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And then I looked at it. Now, we'd have been to Vegas about five times, Frank. Right. 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 Have you ever, ever heard them say, don't carry your weapon? Absolutely not. Let me tell you this. What does Reggie always say? Oh, yeah. They they all, they they always say, you sure you have your shit. Yeah. Now, after that shit was over, we had all been carrying anyway. So why didn't he say, yo, after he left, why did he say, yo, y'all think it'll keep y'all shit on you? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, just, it's too much stuff going on, man. Frank, I'm telling you, I, I'm going by the vibes that I seen prior to it starting. Right. It even started like someone knew. Well, let me tell you this, what I was told. I was told that uh, um, things weren't that good between Sugar and Tupac within the last uh, few weeks when he was on gang related. So, wait, I'm going to go back before. What did I tell you? It happened on Gridlock, too, though. What did I tell you what happened in New York that I witnessed? What? When he said he was bailing. Who? Remember, I told you me and Al was riding the limo and we heard Snoop do an interview with a lady in DJ mm-hmm. and he turned and he started smashing shit up in the limo saying get me back to that motherfucker hotel this shit is bullshit I ain't got no motherfucker here I ain't got my back fuck this fuck that oh, you're pop. remember I told you when we walked the walk we upstairs we should this shit was sweet mm-hmm. then we walked up there and he was there we heard the shit he was like man I'm getting the fuck out of here you motherfucker Give me 
get an answer on that. Well, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Yeah. Why? First of all, I'm the owner of the company. We're getting the licenses and working. Isn't that business end of it? Isn't that something that's between the, the manager of the company and the person getting the licenses? That's right. Would you never hold a meeting? Why yeah, would not with all the employees. Not with all the employees there. Yeah. And then insist that we get there. Remember how he went off? Richie went off when he got one for this one making it? Right. See how mad he was getting he had got? And then, look at the message. Really? Did he say anything in that whole meeting? Or did he just talk about not carrying a weapon? No, sir. He talked about basically. What else did he say, Frank? Yeah. I, it was hard for me to even remember anything else he said. Yeah. I don't remember a whole lot he said either. He, 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 so, he, 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 he made it a point to make sure about the weapons. He made it a point. Yeah. He made it a point that none of us had any weapons. Yeah. They didn't even ask me personally because they know I usually carry mine even like I'm hard-headed. Yeah. They asked me individually. Because he asked me, he goes, Mike, you're not carrying a weapon, are you? This one, what you got to the club? No, 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 no. This was at the meeting. At the meeting. Because he goes, because somebody had told him that I was with Pac the whole time. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you're not carrying a weapon up here, are you, Mike? And I go, yeah. He goes, Mike, you can't have you carrying a weapon. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Why was he so, why did he go to that meeting? Who was that guy? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, I looked on the door. And you know how the doors that has listed the people that work in that building? Yeah, his name was not on His name ain't on Yeah, I looked too. His name ain't on there, and yeah. I always do that. Yeah, I think where I look too. Especially after he handed me a card. That's right. Yeah. I made it a point, Frank. Because he didn't even know where his cards were. No. And that's supposed to been his office. That was his office, he, and he was lost. Yeah. He didn't even know where the pins were at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I call all that. You know, and I'm sitting here, and I'm going, okay, we got some problems. But I didn't say that. But then, when Reggie made a big deal about me and you doing the switch, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. And I remember I told you. I said, that show was weird. Mm. Ask Tim Williams. I told Tim something was going to happen. They all laughed at me. I said, Tim, something's going to happen. This was after we left the meet? No, it was after I left you and Pac. Oh, okay. Because I went back to my room, remember? Mm. Remember when I told you that me and Tim stopped in front of the MGM Grand? Mm -hmm. Why would I have done that, Frank? Mm. Uh, why would I have stopped Tim's truck? I stopped and I said, Tim, I said, get out. And Tim goes, man, you know it ain't gonna trip on you. I said, Tim, I said, get out. Me and Tim were arguing in front of the MGM Grand while the fight was going on. Mm -hmm. The reason we were arguing, because I kept saying, I said, get out. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then he was saying, well, you get out. All you're gonna do is get out pissed off if I show up late without you. You know what Al said? He said, get to the hotel, whatever he... Get this. We weren't late yet, Frank. We were supposed to be there at 8 o'clock. At 7.30, they were calling my room looking for me. They were looking for me. Wow. You see what I'm saying? It was an hour before the fight. An hour? They were like, where's Michael Moore? Where's Michael Moore? Where's Michael Moore? But there's a reason. And you know the reason they were looking for me, Frank? Guess who would have had a gun? You. Looking at the whole picture. Right. The whole picture is definitely on the weird side. Right. It's weird. It is weird. Tupac was depressed. He didn't want to be there. He told me in Vegas that he didn't want to, in New York that he didn't want to come. Yeah. Well, he told uh, uh, Kevin that, and he told me that while we were there, too, when we were sitting around waiting. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, you're asking me, I'm telling you, some things happened that never happened.
something about it. Remember? He said, he said, uh, sometimes we work in each other's office or something to that. Remember? Mm -hmm. what, why would he say that? So now they're going to answer questions. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Frank, something is not right. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It just didn't add up. It didn't add up. Reggie was so weird. I'm going to tell you another thing. Let's look at Reggie's thing. Why would Reggie, he never, ever went to that club and started to... Why was Reggie and Larry, like Larry there? Why was Reggie and Rip and Al there? Mm. He turned it over to Al every time. He turned it over to you. Mm. He turned it over to Marcus the time before that. He was never there. And he was never there. Why was he so, so insistent on being there? And I asked him. When I first got to the club, I said, Reggie, why are you here? Aren't you going to shoot? No, I got to take, take care of some things at the club. And guess what? What did he do different? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. He did nothing. He just was there. He was just there. So I'm telling you, some shit didn't add up. It didn't add up for me. I'm not convinced. By any means am I convinced. You know, the shit looks a little crazy. You know, when you look at the whole picture, why they were so insistent. Why are this guy in a, why are we in an office? This guy's name's not even on the door. This guy's giving us a card saying he's there, but we're at an office where we should even be. We've never we did that. We showed up to this guy that we had no idea what we were doing there. And he didn't even make sense when we got there. Reggie really can normally tell us that. Reggie really normally tells us, hey, you know, they're going to be sweating you. You know, don't come in when you first come in, when they, whenever the heat goes down, I'll get your shit. He, Reggie told us that. He made, he had a point to have someone else be there to do it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't think something's a little strange about that? <laughs> see, to me, the questions aren't answered. They're not answered. Reggie never goes to that club. Never. Did all he can do what I didn't understand is how come Reggie is Shug's bodyguard and he wasn't with Shug. Mm -hmm. No, here's something to tell you. Wouldn't Shug have called him? Yeah. He, he knew how to get a hold of Reggie. He didn't even ask me where was Reg. That's right. That's right. Why didn't he ask for Reggie? First of all, before he even went to that fight, he would have said, yeah, where Reg is. Well. Yeah. Now, let me tell you this. Have you ever seen Reggie? Nope. Yeah, without right. a bell. That's right. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Mm. All the time we go somewhere, who's on that machine? Really? Have you ever seen him where he wasn't with us? Oh, yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You ask me questions like, and then I'm listening to one end of what he's saying, and one end of what she's saying, and I ain't buying off on that. Yeah. That's why I won't answer that question about his Eric It's yeah. really none of my business, but I'm going to tell you, there was some shit happening. What happened, what happened to happened? Frank Alexander? Alexander. 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 While I was looking for Michael's... Um, Okay, let me just let, and answer that question right quick. What did Debbie tell you happened to Frank Alexander? That he was shot in the head. That he was shot in the head? Yep, yep, yep. Not that he shot himself in the head? That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. So she said he was shot in the head, not that he, was, that he shot himself. But you have so. to understand, this woman is coming to me and talking to me. No, but answer the question, how did she say it, that he was shot in the head? Yes, that's how she said it. That don't make sense. Don't make sense. Don't make sense. Don't make sense. Well, a lot of things don't make sense. I was told that, that Frank was shot in the back of the head. That's why it's a cold case. It's not close. I mean, I've been thinking, you know, maybe I'm... Like scapegoat or something. I just want to let everybody know. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't do it. Two weeks ago, I 
uh, I was at the MTV Movie Awards, and while I was at the MTV Movie Awards, I interviewed Tupac's um, bodyguard, Frank Alexander. He came to my hotel room. He had been bugging me about this interview for like a year, then for me to, um, you know what I'm saying, interview him. He was the, if y'all are not familiar with him, he the guy that actually pulled Tupac out of the, the car when he got shot and all that, and he, he was his last bodyguard. And so, you know, in um, the interview, I said to him, uh, he, he wrote a couple of books and stuff, and he one made the conspiracy theories about who we think killed Tupac and the government and, and the whole Suge Knight thing. Everything that you know about Tupac's death is he's the one that was name dropping and exposing people and stuff. And so I had asked him inside this interview two weeks ago. I said, dog, you ain't scared that nobody going to blow your goddamn head off? You know what I'm saying? Trying to expose all these people. And he was like, nah, and da 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 And just sure enough, four days ago to today, somebody blew his head off. Crazy. Hadn't put the interview out yet. We're going to do uh, Matter of fact, the first part goes up. It was the longest interview I ever did in my life, too. About two hours, too. And then while we was watching it, Notorious was on. The movie Notorious, it was crazy. So eerie. That was at the MGM on September 7th, the night that he was actually shot. Wow. Yeah. I had to fly back to California to grab some uh, extra clothes and things like that that I needed. My uh, gate was gate six. Mm. My flight was flight 66. And my seat was number 13. Wow. And I was like, wow. Whoa, wait a minute. 666, right, as we know is like... Uh, the devil. The devil. And then seat 13... 13 being an unlucky number, mm. I was literally thinking, is the plane gonna crash? The next day was September 13th, which was ironically a Friday. Mm. And everybody September 13th, 13th. Yeah. bad luck, right? Right, right? And I don't believe in any, any of that or go for any of it, but it's just ironic how that next day was the day that Pac actually died. Mm. And was God talking to me? Or was somebody giving me a sign?